Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Making 2D Minecraft. The past few episodes have been jam-packed with progress as we get closer to completing this seemingly never-ending project, and this episode is no exception. So without any further introduction, let's get started. The first thing I want to work on in this episode is something that's in almost every video game, but we haven't been focusing on very much, which is UI. To get started, I wanted to implement something that is completely unnecessary, but will look really cool. When you boot up Minecraft Java Edition, the superior version, there is this really cool loading screen with the Mojang logo. Well, I wanted to do the same thing, but our own version. So I got to work trying to mimic the Mojang screen as close as possible. And I gotta say, it looks pretty amazing. But I wasn't done yet. The code you saw in the background a moment ago is actually some resource loading code that allows me to view files being loaded in in real time. What does this mean? Well, it means I can now create this. Oh yeah, we're going all out with this episode. Speaking of logos, for the title screen I needed a logo to signify that this is 2D Minecraft. So I found this awesome website that allows you to make your own Minecraft style logos, and after messing around for quite a bit, I came up with this. One nice detail about it is that the logo is flat, or two-dimensional, unlike the normal Minecraft logo. Since we now have our logo, let's actually talk about the title screen. There are many different approaches that I could have took to designing the title screen, but I decided to combine the regular Minecraft title screen and the Terraria title screen. And I'm sure everybody is rolling their eyes right now, because they knew this was coming. So what I ended up doing is just rendering a scrolling biome background, with the daytime constantly changing. Now I don't have any easter egg to grab the sun or the moon to change the daytime, like Terraria does but I may add something like that later on. Oh yeah, I also added a splash text system as well. Right now I only have a few written out, so if you have any suggestions for some splash texts, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Now this title screen is nice, but it's missing something. Something important. Let's buttonify it. In 3, 2, 1. So, what do you think? Getting these buttons to render correctly was an absolute pain. This is because the menu buttons in Minecraft are different sizes, so I had to make them resizable. Now as of right now, none of these buttons do anything, because this is the only menu that has been implemented, so I think it's time we work on some more menus. Let's do this. Alright, we are here once again on the title screen. Nothing has changed visually, but if we now press the single player button, we have a world selection menu. Now if you compare it to the regular Minecraft version, it's very close, although I did end up stripping certain things out. What's nice is I can now easily create worlds from just pressing a few buttons. And once I go back to the main menu, the worlds are there for me to select. Oh yeah, by the way, see this little world preview icon? Getting this feature to work was an absolute disaster. This is because I had to come up with a convoluted system to take a screenshot of the screen, downscale it, and then map it to a small image icon that could then be saved to the current world save folder. And it really shouldn't have been so difficult, but because all of the variables I had to use were completely different data types, I had to convert between them. But it now works. And I can even reset the icon, and it will display a default icon, but a 2D version instead. Now, I want to take a bit of a break from working on these menus, and work on adding something else that would look really nice. And the thing I want to add are stars. Now, I didn't exactly know how I should go about implementing these, because I didn't want each star to be an entity like the player, or the other mobs are, so I actually ended up taking a slightly different route, by opting to store the stars as a new type instead. And that type I am talking about is a particle. Since I plan to add a bunch of particle effects in the future, it just seemed logical to implement the particle system now, and then pair it up with the stars. And so I got to work. Alright, the stars are now done. 
I didn't want the entire screen to be covered in stars, since the background would cover up most of them, so I actually have a horizon that the stars become transparent as they approach. And once they reach it, they are then deleted to save rendering time. Now in the last episode, we started working on implementing mobs, and the first mob we added was the zombie. And I tried to create a system to automatically spawn the zombies, but it didn't work very well. So I spent some time completely rewriting the mob spawning system, and it now functions the way I want it to. But we still don't have a way to actually kill the zombies, so I think it's time to implement some basic combat. So to get started, I wrote out some code to check when the mouse cursor intersects with a mob. And then from there, I'm able to detect when a hit occurs. There are only really two conditions required for this. The first is that the mouse overlaps with the mob and is then clicked down. And the second is that the distance between the intersection and the player isn't too large. And once I got that working, I decided to use the particle system I implemented earlier to add a little detail when you hit a mob. Now the next thing I want to add is a feature that goes hand in hand with the zombies, which are dungeons. Since this is the first structure I'm implementing, I started off by writing out some boilerplate code to handle this new generation system. And then I started writing the code to actually generate the dungeon itself. Now to get the dungeons to look nicer, I had to add a couple of new tiles for this, including mossy cobblestone and a mob spawner. But I also decided to add some new walls as well, to give the dungeons a background. To test this new generation, I decided to generate some dungeons at the start of each chunk. And it was a bit of a mess at first, but it eventually started to look better. Now the next step was to actually generate the dungeons in random locations. And one of the things I really wanted to do was to allow the cave systems to generate through the dungeons. But the problem is that the structures are generated after the cave systems are. So I added some code to only place down the dungeon blocks if it replaces other solid blocks. And here is the result. I will probably end up reducing the frequency of them, because they are quite common. But for now, I like having something to spice up the world. And on the topic of spicing up the world, it is a tradition that in every episode I add a brand new biome. And the biome I've decided to add in this episode is a very simple one, but an important one. And that is the mountain biome. Now this process was pretty straightforward, as I didn't need to add any new blocks or anything. The only real issue I had is that I wanted to have patches of grass blocks spawn on the surface, instead of having the entire thing being grass blocks. So that meant when the blocks are generated, there would just be a huge chunk of grass that looks really ugly, since I couldn't generate the grass and dirt separately. So to fix this, I just added a new tag to the blocks that allows them to be updated to dirt blocks immediately, instead of having to wait for it to happen naturally. And with our new biome implemented, that is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you have any suggestions on things you would like to see added in the next episode, just leave them down in the comments below. Anyways, thank you guys as always for watching and for your support, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye